Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. I will be reading for you an article on Yahoo News entitled Rise of Latino Population Blurs U.S. Racial Lines. I will not be reading all of the article. I will be reading portions of the article. Washington Associated Press. Welcome to the new off-white America. A historic decline in the number of U.S. whites and the fast growth of Latinos are blurring traditional black-white color lines, testing the limits of civil rights laws and reshaping political alliances as whiteness begins to lose its numerical dominance. Long in coming, the demographic shift was most vividly illustrated in last November's re-election of President Barack Obama, the first black president, despite a historically low percentage of white supporters. Many Latinos voted for Barack Obama. Um, many black people voted for him as well. The white votes were down from his first election. And I guess this was the, you know, one of the first times where the white vote wasn't as important as usual. So what they're doing is playing into the hands of the white supremacists, as I said in my last one of my last two videos, as well as my video, um, which I think is entitled "Civil War." Despite being a nation of immigrants, America's tip to a white minority has never occurred in its 237-year history and will be a first among the world's major post-industrial societies. Numerically, the U.S. is being transformed. The question now is whether our institutions are being transformed. The numbers already demonstrate that being white is fading as a test of American mass. More U.S. babies are now born to minorities than whites. A milestone reached last year. By minorities, they mean Hispanics because the black community is not growing because of the gay population as well as because of abortions. So by minorities, they mean Hispanics and or Asians. The District of Columbia, Hawaii, California, New Mexico, and Texas have minority populations greater than 50%. By 2020, eight more states are projected to join the list. Arizona, Florida, Georgia, Maryland, Mississippi, Nevada, New Jersey, and New York. Latinos already outnumber whites in New Mexico. California will tip to a Latino plurality next year. By 2039, racial and ethnic minorities will make up a majority of the U.S. working age population, helping to support a disproportionately elder, the white population through Social Security and other payroll taxes. More than one in four people's age 18 to 64 will be Latino. So, refer to my video entitled The Civil, Civil War. I believe it's called Civil War. Um, and it's where I speak of the racial tensions that are going to come to a head in the United States. Um and the um, civil unrest or civil war that will ensue, it will be because of the economy as well as racial tension. I said that it will start with the Hispanics, the guy who killed um, the boy in Florida was Hispanic. I said in that video that I believe it will be the Hispanic population and that it will probably start in um, the D.C. area. And then I began to give my own interpretations or ideas of why or how that would be possible. And I talked about the different gangs and things like that. And I spoke about the fact that we as people 
have no right to have any animosity towards the Hispanics at all because they are the most hardworking people in this country, hands down, outside of the um, immigrants from Africa, which, you know, that population is um, not as big, of course, as the Hispanic population. But those two people groups are the hardest working people in the country right now. Those are just facts. I mean, check the statistics. You know, they're very hardworking. But nevertheless, because of, um, you know, as I said, I gave my own ideas with the gangs and things like that. I didn't know that Trayvon Martin was going to be killed and that the guy who was who would kill him would be Hispanic and that he would be from the Washington, D.C. area. I believe he's from Alexandria, Virginia, um, which is right outside of D.C. Mm, and also, of course, I didn't figure in, factor into this um, scenario the fact that, you know, the Hispanic population is number like the largest minority and they're outnumbering many of the other minorities and fastly approaching the point where they will be outnumbering whites and of course the white supremacists are gonna be highly upset. Um, there's only one thing that could happen that would upset black people to the point where they would um right, and that would be if something was to happen to Barack Obama, which is why I believe that if something does happen to him it will be very well planned. And it is only for the purpose of causing, um, you know, black people to go ham, as, as we say in the D.C. area, to go ham, to just go hog wild is what that means. Um, and, they, and they will. I mean, trust me. <laughs> it's really not funny. It's quite sad. Um, my frequency, that thing that happens, um, the girl, as I said, her last name is Faith, I forget her name, she speaks a lot about frequency, I wish that I could remember her name so that I could direct you to her channel, I don't remember the name, Ture Fatwa or Fatwa Ture speaks about her on her channel, um, but in any case, it's a sound, and the, and the enemy has, I believe, had tried to mimic it. It wasn't working. It's so very specific, but today, it certainly was um, very clear and very loud and lasted for a longer period of time than usual. That is only only time I've 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 heard those sounds, and the Lord has allowed me to know that it's Him, like sort of a clarion call, I guess you could call it, you know, um, because when I would hear it, things would happen from Kim Jong-un being elected and, and them announcing that his dad had died and there was a thing for the Pope being, vis um, stepping down, um, I think when Cash, uh, not Castro, but Chavez, they announced that he had died the first time there was some other, it's always some major political event, some sort of shift, well, I think when Sandy Hook had happened, um, the, that night before that happened, I heard the, the sound that the Lord gives me, um, it's always something like that, I, so I don't know what it will happen, of course the Pope is being inaugurated, uh, we will have representation there, there will be representation from the Hindus, the Muslims, and other religions, including Christian denominations, will be going there to bow their knee to the pontiff, who has been only referring to himself as the Bishop of Rome and not the Vicar of Christ and all the other titles. <laughs> Sitting in the seat of Pope, of Peter, and referring to yourself mostly as the Bishop of Rome. Peter the Roman, if you ask me, as I said, who knows if he'll be um, around or how long he'll be around because whoever sits in that seat is Peter the Roman because <laughs> the Vatican is a separate country. In his, in his case, he is a citizen of Rome, as I mentioned before. He's been living at the Vatican um, for quite some time or whatever the case may be. He has dual citizenship. That's, I mean, check the, it's right on Wikipedia. Um... <laughs> And he sits in the seat of Peter. It's just like when Baptist ministers get up in the pulpit and say, you know, they, they'll pray and they'll say, Lord, strengthen me as I um, walk in Peter's shoes or as I stand um, 
and Peter's footsteps over the walk. You know, something about standing, um, I'm sorry, not Peter, excuse me, John's shoes. Speaking of John the Baptist. So Baptist ministers always say that, you know, I'm standing in the place of John the Baptist. So if Baptists stand in the place of John the Baptist, Catholics stand in the place of Peter. But, you know, they'll say it's a stretch. But as I said, Glory of the Olives, Ratzinger, a German, has nothing to do with olives. But when you reach Benedict, the reach further, the Benedictine order, reach further. His order was called the Olivetans, reach further. That comes from the Mount of Olives. So it's like, okay, there's olives. With all of those prophecies with the popes you had to reach, and no one had any problems reaching with any of the, of the other 111. But in any case, I digress on that issue. I don't know what will happen tomorrow. It may have nothing to do with Rome. It may have nothing to do with our delegations that will be in Rome. What happens if, um, if it's not tomorrow, the day after, sometime, it's usually a day or two, usually, after that sound comes that I, um, you know, something happens. This time it was louder and it was stronger and it was um, you know, so I don't know, it could be something even more major. But um, it could happen right here in the United States of America. You know. It could happen right here, so I'll be watching for my own homeland. And of course, as always, we must continue to watch Jerusalem and watch Israel because that is the apple of God's eye. The Lord God will bless those that bless Israel and curse those that curse Israel. My prayer is that they will be blessed with repentance to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, to accept him who is the Messiah who came to them and they rejected him, but they knew not what they were doing. I pray that God will protect them And that he will keep them as the apple of his eye. And I pray that those of you who do not know the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that you will please come into right relationship with God through Jesus the Christ of Nazareth, who died on the cross for you and I. Okay, he bore our sins, our iniquities, our sicknesses, our diseases. He did it all. Only he could do it because he alone is worthy. He alone is God. There is no God but Jesus. He is the only way. I don't care if you like it. It is what it is. So God bless you. And I will see you soon.